Okay, I'm going to pretty quickly correct this, and uh, hopefully, you know, I, I, I recommend that you do the same. Uh, just redo this, uh, changing this to a cosine, and running through everything and seeing the way it works. Well, if this is a cosine, then uh, the derivative of i with respect to p is going to be the negative of the sine. So we're going to have a negative here and a sine here. Down here, we're, we'll be finding an antiderivative of the cosine, which is going to be a sine. So we're going to have a sine here, and it's going to be positive. The phase relationships are going to be the same, but the i of t is not going to be a sine. It's going to be a cosine, and the same here. Uh, the uh, 90 degree phase relationship is still going to be the same. Now, I'm going to go through and make those couple of changes. Really, all I've got to do in changing this from cosine is make the changes that follow to the cosine uh, here and, and, and the cosine here. Um, uh, yeah, so these are going to be signs, and uh, I'll quickly make the changes, and you can check and see if they work. Hopefully, you've done that already. Okay, now you should be able to verify these. I've got cosines here, which is going to put a negative sign here and a sign here, but without the negative that was there previously. So now, in this case, the corrected graphs, well, in both cases, the current is now a cosine function. Uh, go ahead and uh, take a minute, pause, because I'm going to be right back in a flash, and uh, I will have drawn in the corresponding uh, voltage functions for the inductor and for the capacitor. Inductor here, capacitor here. Okay, the graph of a negative sine function is going to be just flip down from the sine function. And we can see that this graph here is actually identical to this graph if this graph had just shifted to the left. Now, everything shifts to the left so that the phase difference um, between current uh, to voltage is, again, going to be 90 degrees. And we can see that um, easily uh, at this point, the voltage function is down uh, is zero and at going down, and at this point the current function is zero and decreasing. So we have again the same 90 degree shift we had over here. Uh, over here, the graph is again shifted to the left 90 degrees. This point, uh, well, we don't really want to. Uh, compare this point. Let's compare uh, the peak of this with the peak of this. Okay, so the peak of the voltage function is shifted in this direction from the peak of the current function. So we have a uh, shift of negative 90 degrees in this case, and we'll call that negative 90 degrees, and we'll call this negative 90 degrees. Okay, so convince yourself of those things. That's the only thing that needs to be modified here. Okay, now uh, you can see what would need to be modified here using a cosine here. So uh, you should go through and make those modifications. I'm going to tell you what they are, then I'm going to pause and write them down. <coughs> so if you haven't thought it through, stop and think through. Okay, well, if this is a cosine, then uh, this is going to be the cosine because, well, you can just refer back to the functions that we got previously if necessary. Uh, this is going to be a negative of the sine, and this is going to be a positive of the sine. So we're going to have a negative here, positive here. This is going to be a sine. This is going to be a sine. That's going to mess up the signs over here, but we'll deal with that. Okay, the only things to change here, you have a cosine here, cosine here, the negative of a sine here, uh, the positive of a sine here, giving you this relationship. Now, uh, you have a negative here of the omega L minus 1 over omega C, so that the triangle I drew over here <coughs> doesn't appear to work as well. I'm not going to go into the details of that. Um, simply say that the V max of T doesn't care which side is which. The inverse tangent kind of does. 
where this really comes from is the sum of two angles or difference of two angles formula uh, formulas in uh, trigonometry or precalculus 2 should be a straightforward trig or precalculus exercise to figure out how that works here and gives you this model. I'm not going to go into that much detail on uh, the trigonometry. Okay, uh, hopefully at this stage your trigonometry is perfectly up to that. One way or the other, uh, you're not going to work through those details I know between now and the final. Uh, this is the way it works out.